I'm Dr. Alex Canseco. I'm a mom, a vet, and a creative. I had my son just over a year ago, and when I was pregnant with him, just like most moms, I think, I was really worried about lots of things. <laughs> and I did quite a lot of research. I read multiple books. I went online, watched YouTube videos, and I could not, for the life of me, find one comprehensive source of all the things that I'm going to discuss in this video, or I found things that were definitely myths. So this video is for you if you are pregnant, looking for things to avoid during pregnancy, or you know somebody who is pregnant and maybe you want to invite them over for dinner and are not sure what is safe to serve to them, or maybe you work in an environment that has chemicals or other hazards, just like I do um, in a veterinary, veterinary hospital, and want to know how you can best protect yourself and your growing baby. This will be a two-part series uh, of videos, just because of how much information content there is in it. I will try to make it a little bit fun by alternating the facts with the, with the fiction. So let's get straight into it. One, alcohol. There is no level of alcohol that has been proven safe during pregnancy. It increases the risk of miscarriage and stillbirth and can result in a condition called fetal alcohol syndrome. And that's where the baby develops facial deformity, heart defects, or even intellectual disability. Myth number one. In Japan, some women are told that spicy foods can give their babies a short temper. Fact number two, that smoking during pregnancy increases the risk of health, health problems uh, for the developing baby. And that includes preterm birth, low birth weight, uh, birth defects of the mouth and lips, as well as the brain and lungs. And, and smoking during and after pregnancy also increases the risk of sudden infant death syndrome. There are really not many studies out there uh, in terms of uh, drug effects on the unborn baby just because of the ethical concerns on um, creating those studies. So there are many animal models used for testing and determining drug safety during pregnancy. But that doesn't always, uh, can or cannot always be then extrapolated into human medicine. From my own experience as a veterinarian working with different species of animals, there are drugs that one species will do great on. And then you give that same drug to another animal and it will kill them. Myth number two. It's actually I'm from the US and apparently uh, some people believe that spicy food and cravings for spicy food and strawberries can give babies birthmarks. Who knew? Fact number three, caffeine. So you may have heard that you can have up to 200 milligrams or two to three cups of coffee per day while being pregnant. However, don't forget about other sources of caffeine such as tea, mate, cola, chocolate, amongst other things. And also keep in mind that different brands of coffee and different brands of tea will contain different levels of caffeine. So definitely read the labels closely. Now, numerous studies on animals have shown that caffeine can cause birth defects, premature labor, preterm delivery, reduced fertility even, and increase the risk of low birth weight in their offspring, as well as other reproductive Act problems. Number four, certain herbal teas. So herbal teas, as opposed to regular tea, are not made from the leaves of the plant, but rather they're made, they are made from the roots, the berries, the flowers, or the seeds of the plant. And true, herb, and true herbal teas don't have any caffeine. However, some of these teas can have herbs in them with medicinal properties, so you have to be really careful about which of these teas you might consume while you're pregnant. 
And because large amounts of some herbs, such as, for example, peppermint, red raspberry leaf tea, uh, are thought to cause uh, premature contractions and can induce labor. Saying that, um, red raspberry leaf tea uh, has also been proven to some good benefits in moderation. So definitely do your research on that one. I'm not going to elaborate too much more. Certain herbs that um, I found uh, might be dangerous during pregnancy include uh, basil oil, black or blue cohosh, clove oil, um, comfrey, juniper, mistletoe, pennyroyal, sassafras, wild yam, and many others. Um, and safe teas, typically fruit, fruit-based teas are safe. So things like citrus peel, ginger, which is also really helpful for um, nausea during pregnancy, lemon balm, orange peel, those sorts of teas, and rose hip. They should, uh, they should be fine. I think it should be consumed in moderation, no more than two to three cups per day. And um, once again, it's imperative to read the labels carefully and just make sure your tea doesn't contain any harmful herbs or excess amounts of caffeine, such as can be found in, for example, green tea. And another myth. Or is it that milk can cause your baby's skin to be whiter? Uh, fact number five, excessive vitamins. So most vitamins can be toxic in excess, even um, if you're not pregnant. Um, but in particular, things to watch out for excess amounts of calcium, iron, vitamin A. Um, and sources of vitamin A include things like um, pate, uh, and also liver. And you definitely want to avoid pate for other reasons, but you don't want to be having too much liver. Not to say you can't have any, but you just have to be careful not to overdo it. And best to speak to your doctor if you're not sure about actual quantities. Excess vitamins have been shown to cause birth defects. Myth so, number four. There's an old belief in Mexico that eating eggs while you're pregnant will cause your baby to be stinky. <laughs> Fact number six. Certain seafoods. You definitely want to avoid the large predatory fish, such as shark, um, swordfish, king mackerel, tuna, tilefish, orange ruffy, ling, and barramundi. These fish uh, contain high levels of mercury that can cause damage to the baby's developing brain and nervous system. Uh, they, the Mayo Clinic does not recommend more than one to two servings of these fish per month or just steer clear of them. It's probably best. There are lots of other fish and seafood that you can consume uh, in moderation. So two to three times per, per week or eight ounces, uh, 340 grams per week. Uh, those fish include salmon, anch anchovies, herring, sardines, trout. And now we have myth number Five, eating crab uh, might make your baby mischievous or could cause them to have 11 fingers, one or the other. What about processed foods? Many women crave processed foods during their pregnancies. You know, you've got chips, you've got chocolates, you've got lollies. They are low in nutrition, in nutrients and high in calories, sugar and added fat. So, and specifically added sugar has been linked to development of several diseases, including type 2 diabetes and heart disease. Now we're going to talk about food that can lead to food poisoning. Um, for example, undercooked eggs and products that contain undercooked eggs for mayonnaise, ice cream, cheesecake, chocolate mousse, so raw undercooked meats raw sprouts, including alfalfa, clover, radish, mung bean sprouts, all of these things can contain harmful bacteria um, such as salmonella, uh, and this can lead to severe diarrhea, vomiting, fever, dehydration, all of which have terribly detrimental effects to the developing fetus. Uh, next subcategory um, is the unpasteurized products, including dairy products such as uh, cheese and milk. Uh, for example, brie, blue cheese, um, gorgonzola, uh, rock and fortin, I think that's how you say it, and camembert. 
as well as pate, unpasteurized juice, processed meats, street food, unwashed raw vegetables, leftovers, pre-prepared meals that have not been stored properly. All can harbor harmful bacteria, viruses, and parasites, such as listeria, E. coli, hepatitis A, and toxoplasma. What about cats? You may have heard that there are issues with cats during pregnancy. What do you need to know about cats and pregnancy? Well, let me start off by telling the story. I have a friend whose wife had trouble conceiving. And they owned a beautiful ragdoll cat who they loved very, very, very much. Um, and they were told by their family physician that they had to get rid of that cat for fear of contracting toxoplasmosis. And they were devastated. Um, but they were really desperate to have a baby, so they rehomed the cat. Well, you don't need to get rid of your cat. You do not, I repeat, you do not need to get rid of your cat. Cats are, first of all, cats are not the only source of toxoplasmosis. Common sources include uncooked meat or undercooked meat, unwashed raw fruits and vegetables, soil, and then of course infected cat feces. It's unlikely that you will be exposed to the parasite by touching an infected cat because they don't usually carry it on their fur. I mean, unless they're covered in their feces. Um, but also indoor cats that um, don't hunt prey or don't eat raw food really are very unlikely to be infected. An infected cat sheds the parasite in their feces and the parasite is actually not infective. It has to sporulate in the feces and that takes one to five for it to be infective and that takes about one to five days the cat will only ever shed that organism for two to three weeks in their lifetime because after they've been infected once they typically develop protective antibodies so they won't uh, be shedding it again there is a problem though you, most cats that are infected with toxoplasmosis don't actually uh, show any clinical signs and as veterinarians, we do not routinely test for toxoplasma in cats. So there's really no way to know if your cat has toxoplasma. There are some really easy precautionary steps you can take to avoid uh, your possible risk of contracting toxoplasmosis. Have a non-pregnant family member change the litter box. Um, if that's not possible, make sure you're wearing gloves, make sure you're washing your hands after you do it, make sure you're changing the litter box at least once a day, if not a couple of times a day. Remember that parasite takes one to five days to be infective in the feces. Don't feed your cat raw food, especially while you're pregnant. Um, keep cats indoors to avoid them hunting. Keep outdoor sound sandboxes covered because that's where feral cats can poop and other animals that can carry toxoplasma can poop. Um, and of course wear gl gloves if you're handling any outside um, soil or, or sand. Um, if you're gardening, wear gloves. Make sure you're washing your hands after you do that. Make sure you're thoroughly washing your fruits and vegetables also. So we're at the end of the video. You're probably freaking out about all those scary things that can cause terrible things to the baby. Um, but I have some wonderful news to finish everything off with, and that is chocolate. I'm sure lots of women during their pregnancies have craved this more than once or are craving this right now. Well, let me tell you, I have found some promising information um, to say that chocolate might actually be good for your pregnancy. And here, Dr. Katri Reikonen at the University of Helsinki in Finland published research that suggested a correlation between eating chocolate when pregnant and giving birth to a happy baby. I hope that makes all of you as happy as it makes me. If you enjoyed my video, please subscribe, hit the bell button, and come back to see me soon. Bye.